and that's you. And I want to get to my surfboard. The surfboard just doesn't just come to me for the work. Everybody does. Everybody does. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Okay, my schedule for Alien and UFO Week is right out the window because I've already got a video recorded for today. But that's going to have to be now tomorrow. So I'm going to have to edit the this is day five to this is day six because today is day five because I need to get this information out to you ASAP. Okay, which means as soon as possible. Thank you. Big shout out to um, Juice XOTWOD, one of the people that sent me this link. Okay, with this news. Um, Pentagon acknowledges secret UFO project called Blue Kona, right? Um, I no, I I didn't hear anything about it, right? Um, I've heard of Project Blue Book or Blue Beam. I don't know what the difference is. Is is Blue Book the book about the Blue Project Blue Beam? I don't know. Or is it like the old tomato tomato situation? Um, yes, but Blue Kona. This is actually huge news because from what i can gather the blue kona is a project that um was to do with getting alien or extraterrestrial ufo technology or materials and reverse engineering them and for so long they um they denied that but now they've come out and said yeah we're we did it <laughs> right but it's not quite as straightforward as that and i, I want to watch it with you to try to get the detail but um i'm going to show you first of off uh, a couple of news news videos about it okay um and then we're going to look into something that bob lazar said many years ago because so many people I, I, forgive me if I get my information wrong slightly here and there, but many people just thought of Bob Lazar as some, like, crazy conspiracy theorist, right? I've even, I've even Googled his name and it comes up. Robert Scott Lazar, born 1926-1959, is an American conspiracy theorist who claims he was hired in the late 1980s to reverse engineer extraterrestrial technology. Well, turns out he did, mate! <laughs> to, to be fair... Bob Lazar, that was in, like like I say, the late 1980s, where that could have been made up. He could have made that stuff up. But recently, I think they're talking about Project Blue K Kona could have been a recent thing that they've tried to cover up. And they've said, oh, actually, yeah, here it is. Like I say, we're going to look at some news clips and then we're going to look into what Bob Lazar said and what he got involved with, mate. OK, it's mental. I've seen a little bit of it, just scan through it, but it's absolutely crazy. Check this out first, OK? Pentagon acknowledges secret UFO project, the Kona Blue Project uh, program. Here we go. Kona Blue have anything to do with the program David Grush says exists. News Nation's Joe Khalil is here now with more. Joe, there is a tiny credibility question here. The Pentagon has been saying for the past year there was never any such reverse engineering program. Now it says, oh, there was one, <laughs> but it never really got started. Yeah, I mean, there were rumors about this program, the code name Kona Blue, for a long time now. And it was only last month that they acknowledged for the first time ever that it existed. Now we are getting an inside look at how this program was propped up. So it's called Kona Blue. It is real. It was a special access program, very highly classified. It was proposed from the Pentagon to the Department of Homeland Security. We now have all of these declassified documents and in them it describes the purpose of the program as and i'm going to quote here acquiring studying and engineering technology that the u.s got from uaps or ufo there you go mate there you go so ufos are real was in the documents that 
refers to them as AAVs, Advanced Aerospace Vehicles. Ultimately, the program was scrapped by uh, the Department of Homeland Security, but not before years of planning went into it from the Pentagon. And they, it describes in detail how they stood the program up. They set a budget, $12 million to $15 million the first year, going all the way up to $50 million down the road. And the program in these documents now also makes specific reference to locations in Nevada where some material may be housed. It also references recovered UAP material, personnel with knowledge of recovered technology, and also personnel who know of the whereabouts of this. And just lastly, uh, if you know you think this sounds too sci-fi or that this was maybe one or two rogue uh, employees at the Pentagon, in these documents it also shows that the Undersecretary of Science and Technology uh, signed off on this program and approved it, saying in these documents that it was a necessary step for national security. Oh! Mate! This has come at a perfect time. Because again, again, it, it shouts more credibility onto Boy Bushman, Monday's video that I did. I know I, keep, I know I mentioned that every single video, but it all I, that that was so impactful for me, right? Oh my god! And also, there's something else I want to show you about this uh, video, which which is it excites me. Okay, I'm going to go back to it. One second. So all of that is in here now. We did get a response from the Department of Homeland Security today, uh, and they said simply, "quote While this program." was considered under a prior administration. It was never fully established by the Department of Homeland Security. DHS has released these classified documents consistent with its commitment to transparency. So, uh, Elizabeth, it looks like we now have some very clear specifics uh, about what was in this at least proposal for this plan from the Pentagon. Wait, you, you mentioned some budget figures there in the tens of millions of dollars. Was that money ever spent? Was money ever spent on Blue Kona? I don't believe the money was spent. The money was effectively sort of earmarked within the DOD's budget or the Pentagon's budget. But the program, to my understanding, was scrapped before uh, that money was spent because it was allocated specifically for year one, year two, year three, and year three being an expectation for what they would need at that point. And what do we make of the fact that they keep talking about locations in Nevada and material being housed in Nevada? What is that? Area 51. A reference to. Yeah, that was really interesting. So it was referencing uh, locations where the program was scoping out for if they. May one day, right? I think one day when this is all out in the open and they say, yeah, aliens exist, UFOs exist, all right, we've been having them for ages in uh, Area 51. Soon it is going to be like, you know, when you go to the zoo, yeah? or the aquarium, they're going to be selling tickets to Area 51 and showing people what they found from years ago. It's going to be, mate, it's going to be an amu like just an amusement park. It's just like, oh, look at that. Look, look that's a grey, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, weird. <laughs> they had recovered these types of material or pieces of a uh, recovered vehicle where they may be housed, where they may be kept. Uh, they were bringing on a scientific team to study and do that kind of thing. So they were literally, literally already scoping out locations where that type of work was going to happen. And it's all laid out there uh, in these now declassified documents, right? Wow. In black and white. All right. Joe Khalil reporting live from Capitol Hill. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. That, that's amazing. But what I wanted to show you, okay, which I, I just thought, now, look, they could be, um, they could be throwing um, basically stock images just to fill up a background to keep the mind active as you're listening to the information, right? But what was very intriguing is because they uh, they showed um, this, right, which the Pentagon released. This, right. These are all images of what, you know, they've released and said, what is this? This is an unidentified flying object. <coughs> Here, this, this. Um, and then our good old friend Jellyfish, right? Our old friend Jellyfish UFO. 
that so many creators and so many people said was balloons. Right? It's even on that bloody, what's it called? Um, uh, the CGI channel, right? They were, they were sitting back and they were like, <laughs> yeah, if we do this, it's... I think it's just balloons. <laughs> this kind of feels like it's just a bunch of balloons, guys. I'm sorry, it's not the aliens, not the jetpacks. Yeah, either it's like a Mylar balloon with a bunch of like dangling streamers and stuff, like decorations on it, or it's just literally a bunch of balloons. Side note, no hate. I actually really like that channel. <laughs> but mate, mate, that ain't balloons. Balloons don't just go from black to white to transparent, right? It ain't balloons. I don't care what anybody says to me. They aren't balloons. And there was loads of people... Oh, anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent. But now that we're seeing this, it just... I don't know. It just puts more credibility on that one. Now, look. Again, I could be wrong. But I'm, I'm banking on that ain't balloons, mate. All right? So then she follows up this... Uh, this she speaks to this guy, look, this Australian Joining us guy. Now is News Nation special correspondent Ross Coldhart. What's your reaction? Ross Coldhart, sorry. And a lot of people I've seen in the comments don't think that he's credible, but I don't know. If he's not credible, I don't know why all these people keep on getting him on news <laughs> news stations if he's not credible. Good evening, Elizabeth. Well, look, it does sound sci-fi, but I can tell you there are people inside the Defence Department, former and serving, who do believe that the claims made in the Kona Blue documents were authentic. But that's vigorously disputed, of course, by the URO, the Pentagon's UAP investigation team. They did their historical review and published a few weeks ago, and they said, yes, there was this code name, Kona Blue program, that was proposed, never implemented, but proposed as a special access program, one of the deepest, darkest secrets in the US government. And, and they claim at Arrow that, of course, they investigated and they found no evidence to support claims of retrieved non-human technology. I, I, I don't know, man. I'm just calling BS on that, right? Because apparently this was going on for up until the third year, right? They put $15 million into, um, into this project. So for the first year or two two years what, what what were they doing and why would they come up with it they must have got some sort of ufo and gone okay let's break this up let's reverse engineer it and um yeah we'll put 15 million into it they're not just gonna throw on a whim all right i, I just don't i don't get that part all I can tell you, Elizabeth, is that we now have a very clear difference of opinion inside the Defence Department and also inside the intelligence community. Mm. Because one of the things that's conspicuous, ever since that Arrow historical report was published a few weeks ago, which refuted Kona Blue's documents and said that there was nothing in the whole programme, the wow. allegations were based on false premises, What's been conspicuous is that the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, the intelligence czar that was appointed post 9-11 to centralise and control intelligence in the United States, they haven't backed the Pentagon's claims in the Arrow report. Have they contradicted them or are they just not commenting? They're just not commenting. And it's very interesting because I'm told there is a split between the intelligence community and the Defence Department. The Pentagon's decided to bluff it out and go it alone. There are people who are passionately of the view that there is authentic, recovered, non-human technology in the possession of the United States. And they are determined to get access to it so that its utility can be exploited, weapons can be developed, technologies can be advanced to the benefit of the American people. The problem is there's a group inside the Pentagon, they believe, who are blocking access to this technology. And that's what the decision to not make Kona Blue a special access program was all about. This was an attempt by a group of committed people inside the Pentagon who, who do believe this technology exists to try and make sure that they did everything properly by the book, All right. by the law. Wow. Is it and possible, unfortunately, they were blocked. Ross, is it possible that... Wow, right, okay. Because I think he's mentioned that somewhere before. So you've got people 
that want to release this technology and some people are saying no don't oh mate this gets deeper man so there was a group of people that actually just took down project uh kona blue because they didn't want the information to be sort of like funded oh hey is it possible that david grush might have conflated i mean was he it was it kona blue that he was talking about or was he talking about a completely different program I'm sure the Pentagon would love you all to believe that, the, that David Grush is a deluded person who has no idea what he's talking about. And that's certainly the line they're pushing at the moment. What I can tell you is that there is an abundance of independent, objective witnesses who back what David Grush says to the hilt. I feel so sorry for that David Grush. And uh, this is slowly going to come out, whether the Pentagon likes it or not. And uh, unfortunately, we have a situation now where the government is actively being, I believe, misled by people in the Pentagon who have determined to try and cover up and deceive the American public. Oh, my God, man. It, well, OK, that's just his opinion, right? But it's an educated guess. Yeah, it's an educated opinion, to say the least. Ross Coltart. How do they come up with Kona Blue? Like, how is that a nickname? It's a bit of a convenience, isn't it? Blue, Project Blue Beam, Kona Blue. What's up with this blue? Blue, cold, blue, sea. Ooh, the sea. Aliens in the sea. Come on. For a top secret program to reverse engineer. I mean, I always wonder how they do that. Uh, Ross, great to have you on the show. As always, we will continue to cover this as more documents are declassified and we read them. Thanks so much. Wow. Okay. Oh, hang on. No worries. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that made me think, like, that made me just go on this sort of tangent of, okay, alien technology. Let's have a little look. And then um, it made me think of Bob Lazar, okay? Which for so many, if, like I say, for so many times, for so many years, people have been saying that he's like off his head, right? And um, I found this, a look back in 1989 Bob Lazar interview. It started new, uh, it started new UFO conversation. Right. Listen to this. I've, again, I've not listened to it, but I've scanned through it and it looks interesting. Check this out. 30 years ago today, KLAS aired a live interview with an anonymous man who made some really astonishing claims. He alleged that the U.S. military was secretly studying alien technology out in the Nevada desert near a base that is now very well Area known 51. all over the world, Area 51. A lot has changed in the decades since Bob Lazar first told this wild story. It's wild, the Pentagon recently it? admitted that it really has been secretly studying UFOs and then it wanted to figure out and duplicate that technology. George Knapp looks back at that 1989 interview that started a whole new conversation. It's totally impossible. Uh, the propulsion system is an, uh, a gravity propulsion system. The power source is an antimatter reactor. Uh, this technology does not exist at all. The claim sounded like Hollywood sci-fi. Months later, when his identity was revealed, Bob Lazar said he worked at a secret facility near Groom Lake. Where I'm sorry, but look at this. Maximum Lego Man. Alien technology was being reverse engineered, that is, taken apart to figure out how it worked and whether the Pentagon could duplicate it. This is the simple drawing he made at the time. Here now I had access and was permitted to view and look at the operation of this main level with the gravity amplifiers and the level below. The premise seems the less preposterous image. now. In a new documentary there about Lazar, he describes in detail the spacecraft he worked on 30 years ago. The wow. That I worked on, that when it's, when it's going to travel a long distance, that is how it operates. It flies along and it, it puts its belly to the target and then brings all the amplifiers to power and, you know, it shoots off in that direction. See, that's like that... Um... In fact, I think I, yeah, I showed it on, I think, Tuesday's video where the UFO, like the, it's in the, a, a plane's looking out the window and it captures this UFO, the silver, beautiful looking UFO on a tilt, woof, like that, going straight across. It doesn't fly as it would in the science fiction movies. It flies with the belly, the bottom forward. If the description of a spacecraft tilting sounds familiar. Yeah. 
Take a look at the so-called gimbal UFO, a video released by the Pentagon in 2017. Naval pilots encountered a fleet of these unknown craft off the coast of Florida in 2015 and have since had dozens of similar encounters. The spike in UFO incidents prompted a recent policy change by the Navy, which announced it wants to encourage its pilots to report future incidents. Pentagon officials reluctantly admitted to the New York Times 17 months ago that the military has secretly studied UFO incidents, in part so it might figure out the technology. In the this, by the way, this news um, uh, thing was uh, four years ago, <coughs> or it was uploaded to YouTube four years ago. Gimbal video, there's a mechanistic turn against the wind without deceleration. So we have a craft without rotors, without heat signatures, without plumes, without tail fins, and certainly no tail number, moving in a way that is counterintuitive to our own aeronautics. When Bob saw that, he came to the conclusion, this has Look to be that. a gravity propelled craft. It's rotating. That it does Whoa. mimic exactly the propulsion system that Bob Lazar described. This story is extraordinary. Jeremy Corbell directed the Lazar documentary, but he also broke the story about another now famous UFO incident, the 2004 Tic Tac encounter. Oh, the Navy yeah. pilot who engaged the Tic Tac, Black Aces Commander Dave Fravor, has said he doesn't believe the astonishing craft was made on Earth, that the propulsion might be anti-gravity. When Lazar was shown the Tic Tac video for the first time, it immediately reminded him of the sport model, his name for the craft stashed in the desert. There's no question in my mind. I, I mean, I'm virtually certain that's the way the craft operated, and that uses close to or the exact same propulsion system. Former Maybe. Pentagon... This is so... It's so mad, isn't it? So mad. Imagine... If we were able to reverse engineer that technology, oh my god. That would probably be the worst thing ever, I think, I would imagine. Because like everything, you can use this in a good way or in a bad way, right? An intelligence officer, Lou Elizondo, was in charge of ATIP, the secret Pentagon study. He told us one goal of the project was to determine the physics of UFOs, how they can achieve the seemingly impossible. The military came to believe the craft relied on special metamaterials, stuff that can't be made with known technology. Lazar made similar claims decades ago and was ridiculed. Now the Pentagon is on the same page. Where the study of UFOs did not not end in 1969 with Project Blue Book. In fact, that was a lie, and it is now an admitted lie by our own Pentagon. We are living in a world where it is understood that there are craft technologically advanced from unknown origin that are performing maneuvers that far exceed anything of human technology. This has been going on a long time, and our government has been studying it. George Knapp. Have I, have I got some information wrong here? Because he mentioned Project Blue Book. Right? So uh, is Project Blue Book and Project Blue Beam two totally different things? Because in my head, I know that Project Blue Beam is about like a, wor a one world government, right? And uh, projections up in the sky uh, creating like aliens. And then we all have to work together to to honor this person or this thing or being up in the sky and then when we sort of like all have to obey to this thing right but what's project blue book is project and why is it all blue again if they if they are two uh, um entities project blue beam project blue book and you've got blue kona barbarian what i know it's conan Eight news now. As always, we have posted additional links and resources connected to this story on our website, including news reports from our archives. Mate, imagine if we get that tech. And look, this is another thing that I saw as well. Um, uh, Bob Lazar explains how UFOs allegedly operate. Look at this. Is there any internal protection for the crew? Does the craft generate a uh, a gravitational field inside the craft itself? Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Being inside that field, 
essentially doesn't shield you, but it, essentially you're in, <laughs> and this is a, a terrible way to say it, almost <laughs> in a different realm, because you're, you're now influenced only the, by that gravitational field. For instance, people wonder how a craft like this can make a turn at such high speed, a 90 degree turn when they would imagine people slamming up against the wall or something to that effect. Well, that, that really wouldn't happen. Inertia would have no effect. I'm, oh, wow, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I'm watching this because somebody in the comments yesterday said, or it was a comment or on, on, on Twitter or X, they said, Ben, the only thing that I can't wrap my head around is g-force inside these. Uh, if, they can, if they can go that fast, why, can't, why doesn't g-force just like make them into a pancake? This is, they're talking about it here. A turn at such high speed, a 90 degree turn, when they would imagine people slamming up against the wall or something to that effect. Well, that, that really wouldn't happen. Inertia would have no effect. Uh, you're, you're in a distortion. And don't forget that gravity distorts time and space. So really nothing is going to influence you while you're in there. Describe the gravity amplifiers for us and some of their different operating configurations. There are three amplifiers. The craft can operate on a single one, can lift off the ground. Oh, mate. <laughs> it's so interesting, man. I might have to look further into this technology of this UFO, man. It seems so interesting. There is a comment here, look. <clears throat> it is because the craft doesn't move. The craft pulls space time towards it. That's why it can move turn so fast, pulling it spaced, pulling it's pulling space towards it. What? Mate. Imagine try to think about that, right? Yeah. I want to like grab my surfboard there. Yeah. So normally I'll get up and walk over to it, reach my my hand out, right, and grab it. But in this case, you're moving the world to you. <laughs> You'd be like, I want that surfboard. Whomp! The whole world just whomp goes towards you. That's mental! That's mental! But in an instant, whomp! whomp oh my. And of course, everybody else isn't moving. Because <laughs> they're on it. So that's my surfboard, right? And that's you. And I want to get to my surfboard. The surfboard just doesn't just come to me for the work. Everybody does. Everybody does. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. This is, this is messing my, this is messing with my brain. Man. <laughs> this is messing with my melon, man. Oh, okay. I could, I could, uh, I could look into more of this. But I'm not going to because I've got other videos to do. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think about the news? Um, and and also, we've still got two more days left of Alien and UFO Week. But don't worry if you're into this Alien and UFO Week. Next week, we're still going to be doing them. We're just going to be throwing in some more um, ghost reactions, paranormal, freaky deaky stuff. So that's going to be all good. We're going to go back to normality next week. So a little bit, a little bit, 50 50 of a, or each, all right? But this week in particular is just full on alien and UFO week. So if you like it, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.